I don't even know what to say about this elephant. I don't, I just, I just can't. I just can't. I'm sorry, little dude. You just can't go in my cart today. at a Goodwill. I've been here a few times. As I remember, I think their music's kind of loud. So we'll see how it goes. If it's too loud, I may end up doing a voiceover on this one. Because um, I know I get mixed reviews on when I do try to overcome. Even though I can get the video up, um, I have my little techniques of overcoming the loud music. That loud music is still there and a distraction. So as I'm editing this, I will kind of see if I'm in that borderline kind of loudness where I need to do something else. It's just, I don't, um, I just found it the other day, if I can remember where I put it now, um, but I didn't have the correct microphone to make a voiceover sound okay, um, as well as the extra time element. But I'm a little bit ahead of the game right now because I'm actually filming this on a Thursday and you're not seeing this until Tuesday. So <laughs> I've had time to do a little extra editing. Uh, so let's get in here and see what we can find. It is a rainy blustery day here in Las Vegas. So it's keeping a lot of people at home. And I realize I've just said so a lot of times. I do that sometimes. So yeah, I, I don't know what that is. You know, I just say certain words a lot. Well, I do that. Uh, but I hope you will show me some grace and follow me in to see what goodies we can find to resell. And uh, let's go get shop done. All right, let's get our lucky cards. All right, well, some parts of the store are worse than others for the uh, music. So we'll, we'll kind of play it by ear. We elves try to stick to the four main food groups, candy, candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. <laughs> Sounds like a dentist's dream. Little handcrafted stuff down here. Oh, more advent stuff. Oh, are those miss? Yeah, that's, those are actually like missing doors. I'm a little bit more in tune to the advent calendars after finding those ones the other day. Those were pretty awesome. Let's see what we got here. That's funny. Like one store has all their Christmas put away and the rest do not. This is made out of a little, like a little cupboard door. 10 bucks. Hmm. I like it, but. I don't think I like it 10 bucks worth. So we'll leave that one. Maybe it'll still be here if I come back when Christmas is on sale. I'm sure that's gonna happen like next week. What's this over here? Not even sure what that is. Something somebody decided probably to toss back. I did find myself some pieces of clothes. I shopped that first so I know for sure I have good wrapping material in case they don't have paper. I will be covered. This has a bird in it. I think he's supposed to light up. There's batteries in there. But I'm not even caring about it. I bet he came out of a bag of stuff. Somebody just wanted to look at this one ornament. I'm not going to mess with it. I have plenty of birds on my tree. I had a friend give me a whole box of bird ornaments that we are not even putting on the tree this year just because they're all nicely boxed up. And uh, we're just going to leave them that way till next year because we will probably do our bird tree again. Oh, I like these. These are like clip-on feathers. Fifteen? Fifteen? Fifteen dollars? Okay, I'm not paying fifteen dollars for them. Not gonna do it. Right. Oh, what are you? You look like you have some age on you, but you are split in the back and you're kind of weird. So we will leave you behind. 
This is a tree skirt. I do love the colors, but it's got it's got a lot of icky spots on it, so I'm not gonna mess with it. Okay, let's see. Got some more Hallmark ornaments over here. I'm looking for bird ones. Some of the bird ones actually sell for some pretty big money. So do look for those. Oh, we have this very same guy up on our wall telling us how many days till Christmas. I think I think we've forgotten to uh, move his little handle a couple of the days. So <laughs> it's a good thing we just know. But he, but he is adding cuteness. What's over here? Oh, got a little trinket. We're supposed to have something inside that's no longer in there. Yeah, I don't see anything too exciting here. This is pretty. Better homes. It is also chipped. All right. Oh, look, look at these nativity creatures here. They're made of pottery and they smush them all in this bag and they all, I can see little broken pieces floating around in there. I think this was a set that was made in Mexico. So it's unfortunate that they're getting all damaged, but yeah, it is what it is, huh? We're never gonna stop them from doing the stuff they do. We can just search through and find the stuff that we can deal with and go with it. Those are cute little sleds and sleighs. I think these are sleds, yes. They're made in the Philippines. That's what kind of made me stop because they're not like made in China. And they're actually really nice quality. You know what, I think I will pick those up. All right, we have gone to voiceover because the music is just too loud. I do look at these molds. They're made for decorative purposes and a lot of them are made by Cordon Bleu. And the Cordon Bleu ones do sell for a good amount of money. These were not marked as such, so put those back. But I do spot this cute little bird. Yes, this. I love giving stuff like this away during my live sales, so I grabbed him. Okay, you guys told me what this leaf was when I found some of these back at another Goodwill, and for the life of me, I can't remember what it is, and it's driving me crazy. I've, I've tried to go back and figure out which video it even, even was so that I could, you know, learn the name, and I can't. So if you could tell me again, I would appreciate it. I promise I won't forget this time. This is a little souvenir piggy bank from San Diego. Um, not worth a whole lot. This little Minnie Mouse, I definitely would have picked her up because all stuff Disney does really well, but you can't pay $12.99 to sell something for $16.99. That's just not smart business. And here we have a soapstone duck. Um, it's a little bigger than a trinket box. I guess you'd call it like a dresser jar or a trinket, but $20. Like, oh, holy smokes. Who is looking up these prices? This is the kind of store you know they have somebody looking things up that doesn't really understand the difference between offers and solds. Now this, on the other hand, I love this little strawberry paperweight. It's lucite. It's fabulous. It's going in my car. And if you stay all the way to the end, well, today there's a special bonus. Uh, but every video I do a recap and tell you what I paid and how much it'll sell for. I would have bought this had it not been $15. I would have paid about $5 for it. And I'm getting a little discouraged at these shelves. They've obviously got someone looking stuff up that doesn't really understand how to look things up. This is a line that Avon put out many, many years ago. And sadly, as with most Avon stuff, it just doesn't sell well. This is a brand that when I looked it up, that Buen, Buenlium, Buen, Buenil, Buenilium, <laughs> however you say that, um, the larger pieces sell for some pretty good money. This smaller piece would have been about a $12 to $15 item. This did not feel 
or appear to be old, but kind of one of those like home goods remakes of something that may have been made once upon a time. But I don't recall any maker ever making ones with gold paint on them. These are Katani, and sadly, without those saucers that go with these, they're just not going to bring a lot of money. This is real coral. And real coral is great because you can no longer harvest the coral from the coral reefs. So hobbyists, such as myself with a saltwater aquarium, pay a premium price for real coral. This was kind of a cool basket. I actually am not sure why I didn't pick that up. Maybe because I got distracted by the fish. <laughs> But he's just one. He's just one little tea light holder fishy guy. Now this, a lot of people think this is Murano. And we'll call it Murano. But you can see, it's really hard on the white. But you can see there is a cloudy base there. And they do a lot of the repros on the white cased glass pieces. Because it's easier to uh, hide and do the technique. I tend to stay away from the ones with the white. This is an adorable little uh, Made in Japan music box, but again, $7.99. Just does not leave enough meat on the bone for a reseller. And again, I'm all for it. If they can get that price, yeehaw, I hope they do. More than likely, they're going to end up selling it at half price day, if it sells. This is a really cool basket made by Bassano. They're known for having these baskets, but loaded with fruit. Now this plate catches my eye. Uh, I actually think I have this art print by Fred Stone. Fred Stone's a very famous horse artist. Um, I have several of his work kind of put away as they were an investment to keep for long term. Unfortunately, collector's plates just are not a big seller. This is an interesting piece, but when I got my hands on it, it just, it felt I'm, chintzy. Chintzy is the word that, that I, of the day here I have. This piece, I don't know why they have this priced at, what, uh, $30? It was not signed. Couldn't find any reason for it to be $30, so I just, I just don't know. Clear glass has to be super special, you know, for it to be worth picking up for resale. And it has to be at the right price, too. Like, you can't pay $15 <laughs> for something like that. It's a cool Studio Nova piece, but it's very Christmassy. So, got to be careful about picking up anything Christmassy right now. Because probably the next little surge of Christmas sales will be, like, Christmas in July stuff. I already have a whole tub of stuff set aside for Christmas in July. Those were fun. And then the Spiegel Strawberry, I think, I think it was for a candle, but I'm not sure. And I, I kind of, I'm watching the video going, hmm, kind of wish I'd have bought that. It's pretty neat. Can't buy everything, though. Just can't buy everything. <gasps> But look what I found. I found a matching fishy. And $2.99 is a little more than I wanted to pay for it. But I just really love these. And I love it as a pair. So I did go ahead and pick those up. I am looking for glassy baby candles. Very high quality glass company. And there's a whole collector's like uh, culture out there. Kind of like Starbucks mugs. It's like just one of those things. They have to have them all. I have no idea what this is. No, all these little things were wrapped in plastic. And it was like, okay. Not sure. Not sure. <laughs> Lots of the Hobby Lobby kind of stuff ends up at the thrift store. This was vintage, and it was cool, um, but again, it's not something I wanted to sell online, and it's a big piece, so I did go ahead and pass on that. Somebody will make some pretty good money on it, though. 
These were interesting, quite heavy for their size, but I did leave those. Looking on the bottom for anything exciting. I've been paying a little extra attention to the metal shelves now that I have found some pretty spectacular things on the metal shelves. This was here the last time I was here with that dent. It's just not going to sell at that price. Sadly, you know, even perfect, that vase isn't worth a whole lot of money. It's from Norway. I forget who the maker was. I, it was, it was uh, about a week ago I was at this store. Brass fan. It's kind of cool. Kind of, kind of wishing I'd have picked that up, but I didn't. This, I'm really regretting not picking up. I don't know. I'm like looking at it again going, that is so cool. Why did I not buy that? I was looking for a mark. Didn't find one. And then put it back. Bad Danny. All right. We got clear vases, which... I kind of scour through quickly. If something's going to stand out, it's going to stand out to me right away. Looking over here for something that just looks vintage and cool or, you know, high quality. This would have been a really nice piece, but you can see there it was splitting apart, probably because it got too hot and dry, mostly dry, you know, the drying out of things causes them to shrink and that's what causes the cracks in things to happen out here in Las Vegas. Gotta give them some moisture. You know how I love my fake fruit but I'm really being disciplined right now because I have a whole bunch of it that I have just sitting in tubs that I need to deal with first before I buy more. Otherwise, I'm just a hoarder of fake fruit. You don't want to be a hoarder of fake fruit. <laughs> I want to be a seller of fake fruit. A big, ginormous pair of uh, vintage pots up there. This was a really cool piece. That is real rabbit fur. And it's obviously a, an Inuit art. So I did go ahead and pick this up. Not sure what it was made of. It was just cool. I liked it. Kind of looking through the shelves. I'm looking for letters. I'm on a hunt now for letters. I have a project I'm going to do with letters. Little pirate treasure chest jewelry box, but the latch was broken unfortunately. So 70s. These little guys are still here. They were here last time kind of pulling at me. Somebody painted those, which is, I mean, somebody put their kind of their heart and soul into those and here they are at the thrift store. It always makes me kind of sad. And then we have a chicken. He's kind of a cool chicken, but he was a little flimsy. Then there was this. The toucan wins out over the chicken. <laughs> uh, this is a, another a hand painted, but it's done really well and really a quality piece. So I did grab that. I don't even know what to say about this elephant. I don't, I just, I just can't. I just can't. I'm sorry, little dude. You just can't go in my cart today. Give me an F. All right. I love the signs. I wish I had more walls. <laughs> I'd put up more stuff on my walls. I am a unicorn fairy mermaid princess. I, I just read that. I didn't even read that in the store. I just read it just now. That's pretty funny. I am mean, all encompassing. I think that's a nice selection of all this little stuff here. I heard that uh, this is a phase that's kind of going out of style is to put kind of quotes and things on your wall. I, I don't I don't know what that is. It's like 
it's three screws in a box. <laughs> I have no idea. Yes, if you think my hands are full, you should see my heart. I love the little sayings. I love all that. I have a little wall with all that stuff on it that I just love. It brings me joy. So I am not going to stop. All right, on to the drinking glasses, which is always an interesting foray through a lot of very common stuff. And then you got to try to find the special stuff. There's a bunch of these Kentucky Derby glasses down here. These are not years that are worth a whole lot. You really want like the 19, 1970s and earlier are the better years. And whenever there was a Triple Crown winner, those years are going to be good. And just any famous, famous racehorses, those years are going to be good. Um, but the rest of them are, you know, they'll sell. But there's a lot of them out there and they don't bring a lot of money so i stay away from them this was a really interesting wine glass and i'm looking for a name on it there is no name on it and they want six bucks and even though there's a pair i can't pay twelve dollars unless i knew you know exactly what they were and if they were worth you know 50 bucks then yeah then twelve dollars would be great but just not knowing in that moment and you know, just being a pair, I, I decide to leave something like that. These are from Circus Circus Reno, which is interesting that so many of those made it down to Las Vegas. All right. Nothing real special today. Shot glasses. Another Kentucky Derby glass. I don't know why I didn't go put that with its friends. And here we go. Avon Cape Cod, uh, $6 each on these tumblers. And that's, that's the high point of what they bring on eBay. So it looks like somebody looked things up on eBay, but they were looking at active listings, not sold comps. Because you'll see a whole different story if you look at sold comps. I don't even think those are going to sell on half price day. Those will probably end up at the bins. Cute little kind of a souvenir Mexican pottery mug. Got to look up high too. Look up high, look down low. I would have loved to have found the saucer that went with that. Quite interesting. Couldn't sell it on eBay though because it's got the Confederate flag on it. But um, I mean, it's a nice little historical piece though. Which, so kind of torn on that. Who makes these? Charter Club. Uh, now I did a little research, and Charter Club is actually not a bad brand if you are into selling of the dishes. These are still here and still tugging at me. I love them, but I'm still not going to buy them because I just don't need them. That's the cool thing about stocking your home with things from a thrift store is when you are ready to switch out. I mean, it's really easy. <laughs> you just pick one, you donate it back, and then you uh, change to another. All right, love the color on this little bowl. Very mid-century, very groovy, and it is going with me. This was a really cool cheese plate. It's got the different names of cheese on it in the front, like a Mikasa or Studio Nova style. I don't know if one of them did it. This was a, a silver overlay, but that silver just looked way too new. So I think that was a reproduction piece. And this, oh my goodness. Talk about bringing back memories. Wait till you see what this little baby is worth. These are really cute. And uh, they were in my way. <laughs> I'm going for the cowboy etched pitcher. 
which was really neat. Uh, it's a newer piece. It doesn't have a lot of age on it. And at $14.99, that was too big of an investment for resale. And then this vintage tray caught my eye. Loved the color and the design, and I was all ready to get it. Let's turn it over. Let's look for a price. And ooh, that's a problem. Yeah, there was a lot of wear on the bottom. So for that reason, I left this one behind. It's not a big, big dollar amount, but when I find those true vintage items, I love to grab that kind of stuff and sell it like locally in my antique mall booth. That is elegant depression glass. There's a couple pieces here that would not have been bad for resale. Just, just not something I wanted to deal with right now. I kind of have this system at home with shelves that I cycle things through and I know when my shelves are getting full of certain types of items and I have to back off buying those items or I will have spillover into boxes and I don't want that. I want everything to stay organized and moving through here efficiently and quickly. There's some bamboo mats down here, but they had a big price on those, unlike the ones I found the other day, which had a really good price on them. And I purchased. Cute little wood salt and peppers, $3, not bad. These I thought uh, had a very mid-century look at first, but when I picked them up, they weighed nothing. I was drawn to this, but usually when I find these timers at the Goodwill, they don't work right. This is a ceramic elephant tea mug. So I need to see if he's in there because I do really well selling these new in the box things, even if the box is a little rough. Look at that, he's in there. He's brand spanking new. And this was new, but the packaging was really kind of messed up and they wanted $7.99. So the store before was trying to clearance it for 17 and it probably didn't sell. That's how it ended up at Goodwill. Or maybe it sold and nobody ever used it, who knows? But, but that was still, too, I would have paid three or four dollars for that. Kind of going through the mishmash shelves. This ribbon caught my eye, the velveteen Christmassy ribbon. But being as we're kind of over the Christmas season right now, I decided that wasn't worth putting away. Anything I buy for Christmas now is getting put away for a Christmas in July sale. But look what's still here. I got so much flack for leaving these behind last time. That's what it looks like with the prisms on. Um, so this time they were half price and I picked those babies up and brought them home. Carrie was very happy. There was some art that I was very tempted by, um, but I was really good today and I left it behind. Even though you'll see in a minute, there is something that was almost irresistible, but I resisted. That's cute, but that wasn't it. I found this painting and what I think this is, is there was a lot of, well, there's two things. There's, there was a lot of like amateur art, like people did this stuff at home. And then there was a lot of like what I like to call like hotel art. Um, or street, like, it's not the same as street art today, but it's, you know, they used to do these landscape art and stuff and then sell them to tourists. And I think that's what those pieces were. So I left those. They were done well, just not a super, you know, high selling painting. Be the reason someone smiles today. I actually really try to practice that. I really, really do. All right, nothing super exciting here. But then there's this, this is what I was talking about. Oh my goodness, little baby animal canvas prints. 
I just about put these in the cart, especially that zebra. Oh my goodness. But I didn't. I didn't. Did I make a mistake? Let me know in the comments if you think I made a mistake not getting those. Or if you're proud of me for resisting. <laughs> I loved this. It was big though. And Rachel doesn't have a place on her wall to put something that big. This was super cool. But they wanted 80 bucks for it. $80. I'm sorry, $70. My bad. $70 <laughs> still. Love the pencil, little kid's coat rack. It was 25. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. I love to look through the furniture and someday I'm going to have a place to put all the furniture that I find that I can resell. That was a cool pattern and good colors, but it was really beat up. Unicorns. I always give myself a look through the linens and the blankets and such, but they get picked over really quick. I almost have to be there when they're putting them out to find that really good stuff. Yeah, blankets. I don't know what this was. I don't, I still don't know what that is. It was round, it was fringed, maybe like an outdoor table cover, maybe. I don't know. And I'm so mad at myself. I bought all of these Christmas tablecloths that I was gonna sell this year, and I didn't find them until it was too late to get them shipped out. I was, I was, really, I was really mad at myself. So Christmas in July, I will have tablecloths for Christmas. Always gotta look through the plushies. Can be some gems in the plush like this Mayoni. I know this is a good brand because this is the one we always buy when we go to Yermo. Uh, so I know what these things cost new. And this guy's super cute. We got a, a squishy poo. He's really dirty though. He's really, he's really a dirty poo. <laughs> There was a lot of like Mickey Mouses too, and, and I, I do okay with Mickey Mouses, but again, it's one of those things that most resellers who sell plush know to pick up Mickey Mouse, so there is a lot of them out there. So I'm looking for things that are more of like the hidden secrets, and there isn't a huge amount of competition for them out there. Not finding much on these shelves. And yes, I see you, turtle. I see you but I'm going to leave you. And then see like this guy, this guy right here. How cool is he? The Hey Crazy Zoo. Wait till you see what he's worth. These are a good pickup. I mean, camels are a good pickup anytime because camels are just cool. Here's a Clarice. This Raggedy Ann and Andy were newer. Um, I always look at Raggedy Ann's and Andy's for age because the older ones can make you a good amount of money. So you do want to be on the lookout for those. And anything unusual, different, unique, weird, odd, or just so stinking adorable. Uh, unfortunately, this came with like books and like, um, she's like an electronic one. So I don't pick those up. And popcorn. Oops. <laughs>
an interesting trip. I think I would have found more had their prices been a little bit more reasonable. So I don't know what this store is doing different than other stores. As far as their pricing, they may have somebody back there looking things up. But as you all know, if you are a reseller, looking stuff up can be a little confusing, be a little difficult as a reseller that does it full time. So you can only imagine that, you know, some of these young kids that they have working back there really don't know how to look this stuff up. And they may be looking at asking prices versus sold prices and, and so on. So the unfortunate thing is when they overprice like this, especially on the red tags where there isn't a 50% off color or it doesn't go to $1 a day, it just has to wait for their half price red sale. A lot of that stuff is going to end up at the bins and ultimately possibly at the landfill because by the time it goes through that whole process to get to the bins, the clearance center, it's going to get broken. It's going to have damage and then nobody's going to want to buy it. And that's that's why when you hear me complain about prices, it has nothing to do with them being able to make the absolute most revenue that they can for their nonprofit. It's the fact that they are not going to sell those items. And uh, it's proof because I come back to the same store weeks later and those items are still here. So they're not selling at that price. Uh, so that's where I take issue. I'm all for any business, any nonprofit, making as much money as they possibly can. Uh, but there's strategy to pricing and it's it can be tricky. So I now have to go pick up Noah who just got off work early because it's raining and they can't have people driving go-karts in the rain. So I'm gonna go grab him and uh, you go be profitable and make it fun. And we'll see you on the next one. And if you have made it this far, I'm going to throw in just a little uh, morning in the life footage that shows you uh, what our little routine is each morning with all of the critters we have now. So stay tuned for that. This is what I wake up to in the morning. Good morning, Peanut. And then, good morning, Ozzy. <laughs> yes, Ozzy sleeps under the covers and he's really, really, really close to the camera right now. But yep, there's my little Ozzy bug who sleeps under the covers with me. It's time to get up. It's time to get up, boys and girls. Well, this is our little Hope's little habitat for now. She's getting an upgrade very soon, but we have to have the sun come on for her. Whoop, there it goes. Now she's in the hidey hole. I'm not going to have her come out quite yet, but I will bring her out of here. Let's see if she is. There she is. It's not a very attractive view, but <laughs> she's in there. And as soon as it warms up in here, I will make her come out and get some sunlight because she actually gets the UVA and UVB rays that the sun would give her. So she just needs to get it a little bit warmed up in there before she comes out. Morning, bougie. Are you happy? Are you happy this morning? Hello. Are you a good bird? Yes. 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 Hel yes. That's a good bird. All right. Good morning. Let's get you some food too. A little hard to do one handed. I already unlatched it. <laughs> you just put a handful of new food into her little cup there. And we check water. Yeah. Oh, you're so, you want, you want a pistachio, don't you? I can't crack the pistachio with one hand. Yeah, she's saying yes, 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 yes. Okay, stand by. So she, like, I'm teaching her to say yes. You want the pistachio? Yes. 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 There you go. Oh, there you go. Let's check your water. Water's nice and clean still. And there's your little bird bath. All right. You enjoy your morning, okay? We'll let you out in a little bit. Ah, uh, here's the crew. These are the three rescue girls. You guys, are you hungry? You still got some food from last night. Hi, loves. Hi. Oh, just such adorable little guinea pigs. Such adorable little guinea pigs, yes. Would you like some hay? 
you like some hay? Yes, you little mamas. You want some hay? Coming right up. And they get a nice little pile of hay in the morning. I gave them I gave them pellets last night, which is what's in their little bowl there. So they weren't totally starving this morning. There you go, girls. Enjoy your breakfast. And you guys, you're kind of wasty wasters. There we go. There's some hay breakfast for you too. Are you being shy? You're being camera shy, aren't you? Well, you gotta come over here if you want it. Your water is leaking. I wish I could find a water bottle that doesn't leak. We have yet to find one that doesn't leak. All right, enjoy your breakfast. So Rachel is not home, so I have to take care of her boys. This is Skye and JJ. I'm gonna give them a little food. And then of course, there's the Scoop. Hello, Scoop. I know, you just wanna bite the phone, don't you? You just wanna bite the phone and bite my fingers because you're such a naughty little love bird. Okay, let's get you some breakfast. Okay, they are very happy now with their breakfast. Munching away. Munching away, boys. Okay. Your little girl will be home soon. You got fresh food. You got fresh food. You just would rather come here. There you go. Now you just figured it out, didn't you? <laughs> okay, I'll leave you to eat in peace. Our next bit of business is to turn the lights on. Now, this is supposed to be on an automatic dial, but it's broken and this tank is so old that we can't get the parts to uh, fix that. But first thing I do is a head count. We've got our clowns. We've got our cleaner wrasse. We've got one, two, we should have, th oh, yeah, we got three little chromies. There's our gamma. Our blenny is probably hiding in the rock somewhere, but the best way to do a head count on fish is to feed them. So that's what we'll do next. So the little fire fishy came out. We're still looking for our little blenny though. So I'm gonna pour some food in here and that usually gets some stirring up. Oh, <laughs> did you see him? Did you see where he came from? He was hiding in the rocks. <laughs> Here's a little yellow guy. Yes, they do love their morning breakfast. And I always gotta make sure everybody gets some. So we gotta make sure some gets down here to these little guys. There. These guys are just like in a little frenzy. This is this is a little brine shrimp. It's frozen. So we have to thaw it and then pour it in and make sure everybody gets some. And then we'll feed the corals after that. That's it, you guys. That's your whole, that's your whole cube. There we go. Looks like everybody got some breakfast. You can see even our little feather dusters got his little little feathers going crazy catching little pieces of that. All right, now we'll feed the corals. These little nutrients, and I have to get this as close to those pumps as possible so it disperses. See how it disperses it into the water and we do a little on both sides because we've got coral on both sides of the tank and that just puts these micronutrients, oh that's where Blenny's little hiding spot is, micronutrients into the water and then the corals can filter that out of the water. You can see it's kind of a greenish color but now the little corals who are not super happy right now, there's one. There's the little red one up there. He's not super happy. Hi, Blenny. You're so cute. Oh my goodness. You are so cute. And then we've got one here. And then we've got one here. Wait a minute. One, two. Oh yeah, that's four. And then we've got the feather duster who also gets those micronutrients. And then I got to get the uh, salt water off of the front of the tank there. All right. That's a happy tank this morning. Good morning, kids. How is everybody this morning? Oh, you're playing over here with your toy. 
We have not named all these yet. We're still figuring out personalities and who's who, except for Peggy. Where are you, Peggy? Hi, Peggy. Peggy hangs out at the bottom because Peggy's got kind of a little gimpy, gimpy foot from a uh, incident with a parrot. So Peggy's a little shy. As soon as, as soon as they come out of quarantine, Peggy's gonna move upstairs into my room where I can work with her more. Yes, you want to come over and say hi? Oh, you're waiting for some breakfast, aren't you? you? You guys have, like, just got shells left in there from last night, but we will fix that up. And then we've got little Mango is over here next door. Mango's doing really well with Rachel. I haven't messed with Mango a whole lot yet, but... Are you hiding? You're hiding, Mango. Go hide. Okay, I'm going to get these guys some food. So we filled up all the food. That's going to be the brave one. It's going to come over first. And then everybody will follow once they figure out <laughs> that there's fresh food. So it gets them to be a little braver <clears throat> if I sit here with the door open. Yep, they're all they're all saying, hey, what's going on down there? Oh, yes. Oh, there's food. Oh, breakfast. Breakfast. So now they'll all start being brave and they'll start learning that. <laughs> I had one come into the door here. Have to watch that. We don't want to be catching birdies, but um, they'll all come down there as soon as I close this door. Oh, here comes another one. Here's another one coming down. Oh, I call this one Stubby. This one's Stubby because he's missing his little tail feathers. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. One more. Oh, not with the doorbell. <laughs> all right, everybody but one is eating now. Peggy's just looking at me like, what's going on, Willis? <laughs> and Mango's got fresh food now, too. Mango's a little camera shy, but they're just so food driven. All right, I'm going to leave everybody to eat in peace. And then these guys, they're spoiled. They just have an automatic feeder and water. Look at, they got a fountain. And Ozzy has to wait his turn. Peanut gets to eat first, and then Ozzy will get to eat. But don't worry, there will be plenty of food. I will fill that back up. Last but not least is our little Fred. Oh, there's your light. Fred knows the light means food. So look, he's already coming up going, okay, get it in here. So, now Fred, oh, I don't think I can do this one-handed, stand by. Okay, I had to get the lid off of the fish food. Here you go, Fred. There you go. Nummy nummies for your tummies. I don't know where Scruffy is this morning. Oh, there's Scruffy. Back on the glass back there. He's doing his job. Okay, you have you have a good eat there, Fred. Enjoy.